Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Honey and Stag event. Um, if you are familiar with the kind of events that we have, you will know that um, Kelly Lacey and I are keen uh, to bring you uh, the latest uh, in a variety of writing that we think uh, are those either hot topics or, or the latest novel that you should be getting into. Well, for our session, we have with us uh, an author that has written something rather special. Uh, the title of that publication, The Mystery of the Squashed Self. But without further ado, I would like to welcome the author of said publication into the studio. I'd like to wel welcome Tricia Lewis. Be here, Jackie. Hello. <laughs> well, hello. How wonderful to see you. Tricia, how are you this evening? I'm I'm fine. I it's a really sunny evening. Um trying trying to get the lighting right and then my webcam breaking down is is all part of life's um little challenges, isn't it, Jackie? But what the heck? I'm here and you're there and that's all that matters. Exactly. exactly. I totally agree with you. In fact, you know, I think if you can see, you know, um, the way I, I, I've got that, that soft lens on, on my camera, <laughs> um, you know, because because lockdown COVID has not been kind. <laughs> so, so, you know, so I, I like us to be in this gentle, um, soft yeah, focus true. sphere. Yeah. 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 So for anybody who isn't familiar with Trisha, just to, to, to give you a little bit of background on her, she's a communication coach, actor and business owner. Uh, Trisha empowers others to find and be their unsquashed self. And it's this notion of the unsquashed self, uh, along with celebrating the publication of the mystery of the, the, the squashed self that, that we're going to be all about uh, in our session. Um, Again, so Tricia, actor, entertainer, speaker, and story facilitator. Um, I just wanted to start by asking that that road from actor to this moment in time, how did that go? <laughs> well, it was bumpy, um, really? loads of twists and turns and, you know, hills and bridges and rivers to cross and sounds like a song, but it definitely wasn't a straightforward journey, which I think is great because that makes what I'm able to offer now, I think, all the richer. <sighs> so in other words, I, I'm not just talking the talk, I'm walking the walk. And I, it would be way too long for me to give you the whole journey because I'm uh, 64 in August so it's, you know it's been a long journey but actually talking of age it was when I was 59 approaching 60 that I decided that my lovely comfortable world which was one of a portfolio career if you like because I was doing some theatre projects I was doing some speaker uh, regular gigs, which were not in the business world. They were in the mm. community world. So things like Rotaries and Probus and Townswomen and WIs and yacht clubs and after dinner, all sorts. Brilliant. I mean, a fabulous adventure. So there was that. There was, as I say, um, the acting bits and bobs. There was um, I was still going into some care homes, working with people with dementia, delivering reminiscence, which was partly music, partly photos, partly objects. But that's the story facilitating bit, which I did for 10 years, all in all freelance. And then also had trained as a funeral celebrant along the way. Um, I went and did a degree when I was a mature mature. <laughs> person at 48 um, they call you mature students a bit of a misnomer I think but you know I was substantially older than the rest and I did communication uh, BA honours degree in that at Bournemouth University mm. so you could say that I'm a late bloomer <laughs> or that I've just been constantly evolving um, and 
when I decided to challenge myself, take myself out of this comfort zone, it was to enter the business world, to set up a business because it had been a bit of a bet noir, noir. Mm, mm, um, <laughs> yes, I had felt that it was the world of evil people and money is evil. And this comes from baggage, obviously, one of the things that is covered in the book, we all have it. So for me, growing up with a very successful businessman father and a rather depressed, bored uh, mother, I had, shall we say, associations that were not favourable mm. in terms of being in the business world. So I decided, blow it, I'm going to slay this demon. And the minute I did walk into that world, I found myself absolutely bombarded by all the inner critic self-doubt stuff that you can imagine because I hadn't realized it was really there so much before but it always had been but I disguised it very well um, and now I had nowhere to hide and so that was when I took up that that mission if you like because I soon realized I wasn't alone shall we say. Mm -hmm. I am intrigued by that journey um, that you've taken uh, and of course in in the book uh, in I think in the most humorous and and honest way you, you know you recount aspects of of your own journey before we get into the the nitty gritty shall we say uh, of the text so I, you know again thank you that that in the book you do share I th I think what I, what I love about the, the tone is that it is in no way a book that feels like it's preaching at the reader, um, you know, not at all. It feels like a very safe space, you know, from from which, um, you know, to, to be exploring those those elements and those issues that you bring out. Um, now, on uh, on our session this evening, we are going to be joined uh, by two uh, two very special guests um, that Trisha's invited onto the programme. She will uh, introduce those to you later on, um, Helen uh, and Janine. Um, and Trisha's also promised as well to do us a, a short reading uh, from the text, which uh, we're, we're very much looking forward to. So if we could just stop a moment and think of, it's your first full length book, uh, the mystery of the squashed self, uh, and the structure of it. Uh, well, rather than me tell the viewers about the structure, tell us why. Well, what is it, and then tell us why you chose to do it that way. Thank you. So, yeah. it is an interesting structure, and in fact, somebody who reviewed it, who herself mentors small business owners just starting up said it was like a breath of fresh air and it was so good that it wasn't full of look at me I've done this I've done that this is now what you have to do so I thought yes results that wasn't what it was meant to sound like it was meant to feel a bit like we're all in this together because mm, we are mm. um, I might just have made a few steps further along the path which is why I'm able to you know go there but I structured it through the medium of story, um, storytelling and character. And I guess that was kind of a no-brainer as an actor, when you think about it. Um, but, so I think it was quite a natural form, but it took a lot of courage to do it like this because it really isn't like a normal business book. And um, I will be discussing that with Helen in a minute because she was my book oh. coach. Excellent. So I'll give, you, I'll give you more on how that how mm. that evolved, but it, the the structure is apart from setting the scene, which you just referred to, and then at the end um, there's a big reveal, as it's called, which pulls everything together and gives you some quite nice psychological driver stuff um, and some little um, exercises to pull things together as well. But I introduce eight frustrated small business owners. Now, the reviewers have suggested that this should be open to many more readers than just small business owners. So I think that's great because I would love that to be the case. And they are female. But again, I have male readers and they're very happy with the book. So I never like really niching, but sometimes you have to a bit when you're, mm -hmm. yeah. So they 
go and visit Investigator Lewis. I'll just quickly introduce Investigator Lewis <laughs> to you. So funnily enough, Investigator Lewis is quite similar to me. I don't know how that happened. Um, you could almost say an alter ego, I suppose, Jackie, really. Again, I'm an actor. Give me a chance to put a hat on and I'm there with it. But this is a story that actually demonstrates unsquashing in and of itself because yeah. and again I'll discuss this with G Janine because she was very much part of the birth of this character this character was me finally coming out as me if you like although I know it's a character but it was embracing my actor credentials in the business world because I came out on LinkedIn, you don't get much more businessy than that, mm -hmm. doing a video as Investigator Lewis giving a communication tip. It went down like a house on fire. I suddenly had this fresh feeling that I was skipping through daisies because I thought, finally, I'm not fighting more than one of me saying, no, you can't be this, you can't be that, you can't be this. If you're in this, if you're professional, you can't be silly and put hats on. <sighs> What a relief. I could be mm. both. So the character the character of Investigator Lewis is also a great way of bringing in a value which I is high up on my list, which is curiosity, questioning, listening, and eliciting stories from people. So that, of course, is what the investigator does. She just puts in a few questions, but the business owners blabber on because she, <laughs> she asks the right questions. And they are describing situations which will resonate with many people, you know, from being at networking events to not knowing what to do on social media to um, feeling that you can't be a mother and a businesswoman. It's it's loads of stuff. How Can you be funny and be business like? I don't know. Um, I sh You know, getting stuck in the shoulds, you know, oh, you must do this. This is the top five ways to do this if you're going to be successful in business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Having got her note, the investigator, she then goes to see Professor P, her colleague, and this was <laughs> my way of making sure, because this is how I work, I like role-playing stuff with clients, I like bringing things to life, I like, I think that's a great way of learning, rehearsing and all sorts, but I also like to understand what drives our human behaviours, the brain, the lot, so Professor P provided me with that vehicle because she is the geeky one and she takes the notes and she says, oh, well, um, she's quite a character because she seems to know everybody who's anybody. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and that's, that, that then gives the investigator the chance to go back, write up her notes for the port and recommendations, which are for the client, but of course they're for you, dear reader. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then at the end of each of these eight cases, there's a crack your own case, which is a simple, tiny little step by step mm -hmm. exercise to do. So it has got it's got stretch. Oh, and there's a cat. But, you know, you'll have to mm. find out about the cat. <laughs> I, I, I hope later on you'll let me grill you a little bit about the cat. But again, just to come back to that structure that, that we're discussing, I, I found it so refreshing that, of course, via via the professor um we get a lot of really good solid teachings shall we say from a variety uh, of sources uh, but it's not stuffy in any way it's not stodgy um it reminded me of, of seeing little gems as i went along the way and and again uh, for the for the geeky academic in me, I loved getting to the end of the book and finding, you know, that list of references and thinking, yeah, oh, I really enjoyed the, the part from X, Y, or Z. I must, you know, I must get that. I must read more of that. So so to me, it's it's a treasure chest of, of, of a text that that seems, you know, on the surface, uh, and I think that's really good, you know, you dive in, but this there's such depth to it without feeling weighed down. Yeah, you know, 
what is the secret of your of the alchemy in that it, it's really beautiful i love it so um i just want to say as well to to people who are watching if you have any questions uh for trisha do please feel free uh to put them in the comments section uh because uh, again i think you know there is so much to to talk about around this topic um and and before we get you to to bring on your first guest i've, I've got one one last question um, I, and I just wanted to ask that how long, how long has an idea like this, how long was it sitting in you before yes. you yes. actually started to put fingers on keyboard or on pen on paper? I think it's, it's good to be completely open about this. So a couple of years in or maybe even less to starting up the business, I had more or less written an entire book's worth of stuff and it was going to be very much on the imposter syndrome-y thing. Um, and, you know, I'd done masses of research and, and it, was, it was a whole big file. And I never felt that it was quite sitting where I wanted to. And, of course, all the time I was evolving because I was getting more clients I was doing my own personal development, my own learning. So that then stuck on the shelf. But then I kept thinking, yeah, but I do want to write a book. I can mm -hmm. do that. And then, and this is a beautiful segue, I think it was the nudge that Helen, the book coach, gave me. And when I realized I could do it my way with this character that I'd invented and this new perspective that I developed on something, I began to get properly excited about it. And then I was, re it, it was a year from that moment to publication. Great, thank you. I shall return to continue the probing, but for now, if you'll excuse me, uh, and we'll, we'll bring in your first guest. So I'd like to say hello to Helen, who very kindly is joining us before actually delivering, I think, a mastermind later on this evening herself. So much appreciated. Hello, Helen. Hello. Good to see you. Yeah, um, and you too. I'm I won't keep you long. It's going to be a good warm up for me, Trisha, I think. So. That's what I thought. Um and I've segued into you beautifully by more or less, more or less crediting you with the entire existence of this book. <laughs> I don't, you know, let's let's pull back a little bit from that. But no, you were you were a big part of it. So, if you just just quickly introduce yourself, Helen, what you do? Sure. So um, I'm Helen Pollock. I am a personal brand strategist, a business book coach, and a ghostwriter. Mm, and very lovely. And I came to Helen on the back of um, a lovely sort of five day challenge on Facebook, um, which was to sort of nudge people into getting their book done. And I thought, you know what, Let this it, it's now or never. And explain what that journey was for me, that initial journey, because it was there was this little sort of tweaking, wasn't there, that took place mm -hmm. in terms of getting me enthused and believing in it yeah absolutely and I think because you came to me and you were actually quite some way along but then we had to pull back it was quite hard at first wasn't it I think and I know you know when I asked you to come up with a reader avatar and things like that that you did push back <laughs> But it's really hard, I think. Um, people are, are quite nervous about committing to a niche um, and committing to, to a reader avatar for their book. But just like any customer avatar, you're creating the bullseye on the dartboard, which is the people you really want to help. But the other rings on the dartboard will still buy and still be interested. It doesn't preclude those people. So, um, and then I think, so the irony, of course, was that I think you were squashing yourself with regard to this book, <laughs> originally. Um, <laughs> and I know you were, you were a bit nervous about 
again, kind of committing to Investigator Lewis, and you were really concerned about bringing in the research, the evidence behind what you were teaching people. Um, and you didn't want this book to be seen as sort of fluff. And it definitely isn't that. And I would say that the mystery of the squashed self encapsulates everything that you are, all of your experience in a, you know, really engaging way. So I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled for you. Congratulations. Thanks, Helen. And I, it was funny because um, anyone watching this there now, it, it, you can picture that I would sort of send Helen over this, this chapter and then I'd wait for her response. And, she, you know, I'd get like some, mainly it was like two lines saying, yep, yeah, great, let's let's have the next chapter by next week or whatever. And I'd be emailing by saying, what, what do you mean great? Are, well, when you say great, do you mean, I mean, is is that really, does that work? <laughs> <laughs> I, it did say, it did, and, and then it just clicked, but it needed that, it needed, my advice is, you know, if you're in a situation like this, working with a book coach, but it's got to be somebody who gets you, because you're right, the irony, if I had done it, if I sort of blanded down, shall we say, would have been crazy. I had to walk this walk I mean otherwise I was betraying the whole cause um and I'm really glad I did big the, the other thing of course I then started to enjoy it didn't I yes yes you did and that was lovely to see I mean I think so often with book coaching the first job is to get clear on the reader avatar and also to work out what your where the book fits into your personal and professional goals but then um, the next big task is the draft table of contents. And after that, um, we work on effectively creating a formula for the rest of the book by nailing the first chapter and making sure that, um, it, you know, the, the format of that chapter works well. When I say first chapter, I don't mean introduction. I mean the first subject chapter. Um, and... It was a really, it was such an enjoyable process to see us working on that formula and, and finding the right fit for you. And once we got there, it was you know brilliant to see uh, how much you enjoyed it. And I know, I remember you saying to me, um, are you sure, could you maybe send this over in Word? Because I, I think like on Google Docs, I can't really see many comments. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Oh, because brilliant. It's really good, Trisha. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. And it's, it is really funny. Um, yeah, some of us, I think, need more affirmation than others. I think I'm definitely in that club. I've recently done some interesting thing called the Cambridge Code, which is a, a sort of form of personality quiz but it doesn't say you're good or bad or right or wrong it's it's very interesting it's quite subtle but um I do I do come out quite high on things like neediness <laughs> <laughs> that's another bit of my baggage um so you know it was um yeah I, I I might come across as this but that's the great thing is that you got me so you knew that behind all this kind of you know, actory thing and everything that I was kind of somebody who needed all that, you know, I needed that reassurance. And, um, but we should all seek that because otherwise we're being a bit deluded and we're in our own bubble. So whatever you're doing, getting objective eye on something, God, it's, it's a must, I think, isn't it? Gosh, yes. And I didn't want it to be self-indulgent, did I? So yeah, yeah, it's, so there we go. I mean, and, and not only that, but you then, you were then a great sort of liaison, weren't you, to the next? Next part of the process. Absolutely. So as you, you know, as you know, um, I work very closely with, in fact, I joint, I own a company with Catherine Williams, who um, is a layout designer. And um it's it's brilliant to have such a close link with someone in that part of the process because I'm like you know writing content structuring content woman but I really don't know 
that much in detail about the design and production process, which is also so important. Um, so the, the irony is that no matter which person you speak to in the kind of book writing and publishing continuum. So, for example, if you, if you self-publish a book, there's generally seven different people's skill sets involved if you have help from um, some of the writing as well. And every single one of them will want to know, well, who's your ideal reader? Hmm. Which is the work that I do at the beginning. Um, and I, I have a marketing background, so that, that's very helpful with that. But, um, yeah, so obviously once we had your brilliant final draft manuscript sorted, it was time to pass the book on to fabulous Catherine, um, who then project managed all the um, design and production bits. Yeah, and it all it all fits together because if you've if you've figured out a structure that makes sense and works and flows, and there's, there's this consistency in this theme, then it's obviously then the person designing the layout is has already got a good start on that. But then she put this magic and the, the illustrations, which I might talk to Jackie about in a minute. So. Thank you, Helen. I know that you have to now go and prepare yourself mentally. Um, you look gorgeous, but go go prepare yourself mentally for, I think you're doing a mastermind uh, group tonight. So thank you for giving us your time. My absolute pleasure. And thanks for the opportunity. It was a, an absolute joy to work on your book. And it always really helps when you, you know, you send me through a draft. <laughs> And I really enjoy reading it. This is brilliant. <laughs> so congratulations. You do really you. deserve every success with this book and with your work in general. Thanks, Helen. Thanks very much. Have a good Thank evening. You. Wonderful. I, do you know what? I love the insight um, that a conversation like that brings. It allows us, I mean, the finished article, and, and I can see one above your, your, your shoulder there, the finished article is beautiful, but I think when you get that insight into, into how something came into being and the teamwork, the support, mm. uh, you know, from other people, um, I don't know, but I get the feeling that we are living in an age where there seems to be way more readiness to do this kind of work together to bring people along together uh rather than people just you know working alone uh not getting those connections not getting that network um and it, and, it, and it's wonderful to watch uh the way that connections flourish and bring out you know so much more in people mm. but you mentioned the illustrations <laughs> which are just divine they really are uh, so who who did you bring in as part of, of, of the team to, to provide those well you're gonna love this story you might have seen it perhaps somewhere you might have had a sneaky look um but the there is a, a great story i mean now we've got we've got the two the professor and uh, the investigator on the same page there gives you a, an idea. Um, interestingly, I could just be vague and say a very good friend, but I might as well be honest and say it's it's one of my ex-husbands. <laughs> so I'm full of story, Jackie, Ooh. but I won't go too far back. This was my nice ex-husband. <laughs> um, you have I'm a range. Very... <laughs> <laughs> um, still very good friends with him we have a son um, together who's 26 years old and um, Tony Kerens is his name and he is actually you know quite a name in he has a lot of published uh, books a lot of children's books he's either published or been the illustrator for um, and, you know, he's a professional, the real deal illustrator, uh, lives in Swanage, which is where I lived for 14 years. Um, um, but, but from Lancashire, never, never lost the accent. Um, and he's just, he, he has like stacks of little black um, drawing books, it, literally shelves and shelves and shelves that, because everywhere he goes, I mean, this might have been one reason why <laughs> got a bit annoying at times but everywhere <laughs> everywhere we went out comes the 
uh, little notepad and illustrating, illustrate. He's a proper illustrator. Mm -hmm. So I just said to him, he'd already designed my logo, my business logo, which is mm -hmm. a little face. Um, and I just said, Tony. <laughs> and I was, you know, um, going to do it professionally and all the rest of it. But um, in a very friendly manner, he immediately uh, said yes. And it, it just, they're very simple. They're a little a little things marking out the different sort of sections with crack your own case, somebody looking through a magnifying glass. It's and there's the cat. And it was just instant. And I knew he I knew he got me and I knew he'd mm -hmm. get what I wanted. So that's quite a difficult thing, I think, if you're working with someone that doesn't know you. So so it was a, a match made in heaven. So you see, there is a great use for some of our ex-husbands. <laughs> Indeed. And 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 how uh, one of those spooky moments before we began our session and um, I was just looking through Instagram and somebody had put up an image of of an ex uh, and saying how they'd reconciled with that ex uh, and and how good it felt to be able to be back in 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 good contact and then you you know you tell us that wonderful story how <laughs> you know even if you know even if a certain way that we you know that we're we are with someone even if that changes, it needn't necessarily mean you absolutely. Know, we lose them. Yeah, absolutely. He was very much part. He was, without me realizing it at the time, he was part of my unsquashing journey. Um. So, uh, and and then I was very very lucky because uh, at a certain point I, I met the the husband who's actually in the other room there, just in case he's listening. You're great. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we've known each other for nearly 20 years. So, so um, keep persevering, anyone out there. <laughs> it seems to be the motto of the story. It, yes, now, be, absolutely. Yes. Now, before before we move on, because I know you, I know you have another guest. I just want to shout out to, to to people who've placed comments. So, so Timea and Angie and Tracy's with us, and and Lucy as well. Uh, thank you so much for your for your comments um it's great to to share this this moment together as i say i i am a, an absolute uh, firm believer that that we're living in a special time where making these connections and reaching out together and passing on uh, seriously you know, your book is 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 such a manual of moving forward it, you know, um, yeah. it, it is definitely a text for the now. Um, so uh, again, I'm going to love you and leave you because I know you have a, have another guest. And then when I come back, I wonder if you'd give us that treat of, of, a, of, a, of a wee read. Is that OK? Yes. yes. Thanks, Trisha. Thank you. Thank you. So, Janine, where are you? Come in, Janine. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Another crazy lady. Um, I know such amazing people and I would just give partly LinkedIn a huge uh, thumbs up for this. And also there was another community that we were both part of, which I think um, when in a minute you've actually told people who you are, apart from a lovely lady um, sitting there, <laughs> with lovely hair and stuff yeah who who are who are you janine what do you do who am i for goodness sake <laughs> I'm, I'm janine coombs thank you for having me and for letting me join you on your journey it's a pleasure um i'm a small business consultant and a marketing coach and we met at one such community didn't we it was a network dare we call it a networking Oh, gosh, I don't know, because it's not like Janine, by the way, has written the forward in my book, and this little story is in there. But it's it's a it's a real community, isn't it? Because it in fact it was part of my unsquashing networking journey because I was I was feeling a bit squashed up until discovering this community called You Are the Media, a chap called Mark Masters. Um, fabulous, fabulous community. And so although we're not living in the same town, there was this live conference, you know, back in the day when people met and oh I can't remember it. And we certainly met. So just describe that story, because this really was quite a nugget in, in the journey of this book. Yes. So I went to you in the media, which was a bit of a punt. I didn't really know the community very. Mark 
for you know yeah. a bit yeah. longer. And so I happened to be there, and uh, a mutual friend, John Esperian. So if you're on LinkedIn, you'll definitely know who John Esperian is because you can't get rid of him. He is everywhere. Um, but he, I, I met up with John. It was the first time I'd met him in person. And he said, "Oh, you've got to meet. You've got to meet this woman. You're, you're. Oh, you'll love Trisha. You'll love Trisha. You'll meet. The, you know, you've got to meet this woman." And I was like, oh, no pressure. You know, now I have to impress this woman. And, oh, you know, how do you know that I'll get on well with her? And then um, we've got a picture of us. One of the official photographer for the, for the day has got this picture of you and me in, in deep in conversation. And John's like on, on the side. <laughs> John's on the side. And we're like, I'm like this. And the rest is history. Well, the thing is that Janine uh, was doing a series of videos at the time called The Secret Marketing Show in which she uh, put on uh, silly hats and wigs and all sorts, but put across a really good, serious marketing tip. So, hey, presto, the encouragement to start doing something similar. In fact, I basically just ripped you off, Janine, didn't I? Only yeah, I did the hat and the wig. Only you, did, you did a better job and, <laughs> you know. So, Quite sickening. What, so apart from you being so inspirational to me, you obviously come across a lot of um, a lot of business owners working with them on their marketing, etc. From the from what you've read of this book, would you say that those kind of squashing, self sabotagey things are going on quite a lot out there? Just a little bit, just a little bit with everyone, practically everyone. I think that there's there's not many people who aren't self-sabotaging in some way. And I think it's easy to to start generalizing and saying it's 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 a problem for women or it's a problem for this type of person, or and actually, yeah. you know, the more the more people you meet, the more universal you realize this problem is. And Personally, I've gone through it, you know, I've done loads of work on my mindset and self-discovery, you know, I think we're all on a journey, aren't we? We're all on a journey. You've got to learn to love the journey. Perhaps that could be your next book, something about journey. Um, yeah, yeah, that wouldn't be corny, would it? <laughs> why not? Oh, sorry, Janine, it was a serious idea. I do apologise. I'm making notes yeah, of that. Like, you know, it's good idea. Good idea. Good idea. No, it's fine. Just, she could... Unsquash people in different countries or something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Unsquash people on, a mountain, on, a on top of a mountain. On, a yeah, love it. Love on it. an oil rig, you know. You, you can see anyone there that uh, Janine has a fabulous sense of humour. And it was, it was one of the chapters in this book talks about humour. And it doesn't mean you've got to be a bit, a bit you know, like Janine, like myself. What it means is that you've <laughs> it's really nice if you can just release the kind of na your natural sort of humor, which might be very different from this. It might be very straight laced. It might be very quiet, subtle. I'm not saying you can't be subtle, Janine, but you know, um, yeah. So it, it's 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 just about it, you were just inspirational because I I detected something similar. And I thought, well, Janine's doing it. I'm going to do it now. So thank you very much. Um, yeah, is there any, any other things that you'd like to mention about anything? I mean, marketing is a classic area where people can be ridiculously self-squashing because they're following a set of shoulds, perhaps. Mm. Yes, it's it's rife, isn't it? I mean, that's that's the reason I call myself a marketing coach. I'm kind of more of a marketing consultant, really. But when you're running your own business, the you've got to you've got to learn to recognise what's going on up here, haven't you? And I wrote uh, I wrote an article recently um, um, that talks about conscious procrastination and subconscious procrastination. Um, you know, sometimes I realise when I'm procrastinating. You know, I'm like, oh, oh, I went on, I just went on LinkedIn to answer this message and somehow it's you know two hours have gone um and I kind of realized that I'm I'm wasting time you know and I should have this thing that I should have done by now other times um and this is another one I fall foul of and I'm I'm learning to see the warning signs now but I'm I'm some people struggle to come up with ideas I have too many too many ideas 
and I'll just have a, you know, I'll have this idea that's pushing me out of my comfort zone. And then another idea will come up to sort of push me off course and so that I don't have to do that idea. And then you're ping ponging between ideas and you never, yeah. so that you never actually have to commit. And I think Helen, probably it sounds like she um, took your paddles away. So you, you yeah. couldn't. <laughs> That is a great expression. Helen took my paddles away. I'm going to give that as a review. Yeah, in the, in the nice best That's a bit restrictive. But in the and and you, you've taken a few of my paddles away over, over time as well when I've worked with you. So so thank you. I, I, I'm i utterly rudderless. I'm just drowning now. But no, no. It's, it's there's, a better, there's a better analogy out there. <laughs> that sounds a bit like we're taking your paddles away. Um, um, thank you out. anyway I mean just thank you for being you because that's the whole point of this uh, you know the more people can just be the you a bit more um, on there on LinkedIn you know serious places like that um, the more other people are encouraged because uh, uh, they realize oh it's okay look permission permission granted everything's fine and then you release your creativity in a much more healthy way because you can experiment yeah but you, you you're doing it from the right place not a sort of bombardment of shoulds so yeah and you 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 hit the nail on the head there it's not I think people people could look at you and me and go oh god I've got yes. so I have to be wacky now yeah. do I have to be wacky now mm -mm. no you can no. I've seen people do very well on social media um and whatever channel they've chosen just by being themselves and some people have this lovely calm mm. edgy yeah and i've worked with coaches in the past who've just had this they exude calm energy and you know some pe people need that mm. sometimes sometimes that's what exactly what they need and sometimes they might want somebody a bit more um high energy or somebody mm. with a, a bit more of a wacky sense of humor and sometimes they won't yeah, and it exactly. doesn't even mean that they're drawn to people like themselves it's what they need right then and there 100 percent. you couldn't have put that but well i could have probably put it better no not joking um we have we have this kind of banter it's okay we love each other so thank you janine thank you for turning up tonight thank you for being part of my journey and um and yeah i'll probably see you around tomorrow on linkedin somewhere around. yeah yeah thank you around. so much well done it's a cracking book i mean i've put it in the in the forward but it's it's like nothing anyone will have ever read before. That's it. it? It's lovely. It's such a readable. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I really, really love that interaction, um, and I, and I wholeheartedly agree with what's just been said. I I, I don't think you'll find. Uh, another book like this um that you know that brings that that i don't know that directive but at the same time if we're talking the journey um you know it just carries you along uh it, it is a beautiful journey uh and, and some beautiful comments from ella or and from lucy griffin griffin stiff coming out there Th thank you thank you for these comments um it's really lovely to know that that I, I, yeah ella says i love this marketing is self squashing because of dreadful comparisonitis <laughs> oh it's a big one yeah thanks ella you're so right i love ella there's some lovely people out there i see yes. yeah look beautiful now so the mystery of the squash itself, you can imagine that 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 whole idea just really appeals to to Doctor Noir, um, <laughs> and and I just wonder you 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 chose eight cases, yeah, in there. Um, did you have more, and and you've left them out, or, or or did eight seem to be the right one to go with? Is there a magic to eight? No, no, I, that was purely that that those. You know, I kept I kept filtering down because obviously there was too much stuff. Then you filter down, then you see the common links that kept coming up. That I thought, yeah, these these are the these are the big ones. These are some of the more subtle ones. So comparisonitis, people pleasing, that kind of thing, right up there. Um, but then some of the more subtle ones, like feeling 
guilty because you're not being enough of this and you're being too much that or having an identity sort of confusion because you used to be a teacher and now you're a marketing guru I don't know whatever it, it's yeah. it's it those are quite subtle but I I had there was always this common theme running through them that I come across over and over and over and over again so I did a lot of market research you know I had beta readers and I had surveys out there so I so I was determined not to make it in any way from a bubble because yes, of course I've experienced all this, but I needed to know that other people had as well. So, so it just fell into that kind of category mm. of eight. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> now, would you be so good? We'll settle back and will you do the honors? Yes, yes. If everyone is sitting comfortably, I shall begin. <clears throat> If I've got the right glasses on, that is. Right, here we go. So this is from a chapter called Template Torture. And this particular frustrated small business owner has come to investigate Lewis, um, absolutely driven to the limit with trying to do networking and just feeling an abysmal mess, okay? She also sells scented candles. That is her business. So when that is referred to uh, later on, you'll know why. <clears throat> so she's now describing to the investigator the story. As I drove to the hotel, I rehearsed my pitch, determined to cover all the perfect pitch tips I had heard. It's not about you. Start with why. Lead with the benefits. Be authentic. Tell a story. And don't go over 60 seconds. I entered the hotel event room reluctantly. I headed straight for the coffee. There was a short queue and I remembered that I needed to be sociable and do the small talk thing. <clears throat> I turned to a complete stranger who was delicately opening a sachet of green tea. I didn't know what to say, so I made some weird comment about green tea. I think I said something like, I wonder if there is any blue tea, my brand colour. I mean, what the heck? She did a sort of full smile and said something about blueberries. As much as I enjoy a good story, this is the investigator speaking, I needed my client to get to the point. I put my efficient voice on. <clears throat> Can we move forward a little? Take me through what happened once you were sat around the table. There were no croissants. That was it. She had really done it this time. W will you excuse me for just one moment? I ran out of my office and sprinted to Sylvia's Sweet Spot, my local cafe situated next door but one. She knew me well. Two freshly baked croissants were popped into a bag. Pay me later, Lewis. I love that about having a local cafe that cares. Back to work. I got back to find my client engrossed in my copy of A Study in Scarlet Women. Ah, you found a good book to read. Sorry to keep you. Fancy a croissant? We continued, now both feeling beautifully calm, full of croissant and scented candle vibes because she'd lit one whilst I was out. Back to the networking event. How did things unfold? Breakfast was served, then time for the round the table introductions. I was last. I listened to the others, tried to pick up some more ideas. I wasn't that engaged by any of them, but they did sound professional and slick. Then I did mine. I messed up. Nothing came out coherently. I mumbled and then saw the table host looking at the time. I just tailed off. I didn't even suggest a meeting or next step, call to action, or, or I was useless. After a few awkward business card exchanges, I escaped. I could have stayed longer, but made some excuse about having a client call to get back to. As I drove away from the venue with the taste of bad coffee still permeating my mouth, I felt useless. Actually, I felt cross. I told myself I didn't want to be slick or professional. It wasn't who I was. What was the matter with everyone? All hiding behind masks and pretending their business was doing really well and we could go global any minute now. I decided that I would just give up on networking events full stop. The full stop was said with feeling. It, it also seemed to mark the end of her story. She had gone into thoughtful mode again. I needed more. Could you describe your post-networking feelings in more detail? I was looking for clues. I was on the right track, but needed just a little more to crack the case. I can try. I'm not brilliant at describing feelings. I did write a few notes, though. I made a list of adjectives to describe how I felt. Here, see if this helps. Invisible, unprofessional, stupid, dull, no personality, not me, angry, like a man in drag. I knew Professor P would have a field day with this list later. 
interesting. Could I keep the list? She handed it over willingly. Can you explain the thing about feeling like a, I double checked her notes, like a man in drag? Client L took on a new energy as she explained the feeling, which of course I'm not going to explain, Jackie. It's in the book, isn't it? Oh, I think I think you know I I know I need to go back uh, and read the book again because because I need to do crack your own case very much and um, it felt a bit like that Roberta Flack song strumming my pain all, <laughs> all the way through as reading but but thank you because you, you know that animation in the reading and and just catching that voice wonderful now. Throughout the process of the book, you, you know, you talk about putting our emotions through a rationality filter. Um, and, and I wonder if you could talk to us a, a little bit about that, because, you know, for, for many of us, maybe not for everybody, but for many of us, feelings are such a big part of who we are, however they manifest themselves. How can we be dealing with them uh, in a in a positive way? Yeah, uh, I, for, I am. I am fairly emotional. <laughs> I am, you know. Um, and for a lot of my life, those emotions took me into some well, three marriages. Right? No, they took me into some very interesting places. Not all of them particularly helpful, uh, but some of them fabulous. So I think it's partly the price you pay. Sometimes I'm a bit of an over empath. I'm a bit of an overthinker. Blah de blah. So it's good and it's not good. So. When I had the good fortune um, of meeting my current husband, I, it sounds a bit like Cluedo or something, like I'm murdering them and putting them anywhere. That would be spot on, Great. wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, he is a business analyst, a project manager, um, beautifully different thinking to me, although we have similar sense of humour, which is just brilliant. And he's great. But this very gentle approach he took with me, because um, I did take a bit of work, I think. Um, he he just got me, without lecturing me, mm -hmm. he just got me to question some of my thinking when I went into these spirals of catastrophizing based on some ridiculously little thing. The next thing we know, I mean, you know, the whole universe has ended. That's it. Mm -hmm. And he just realized that a lot of what was going on was me just letting these emotions run rampant. Now, what I worried was that where I had always believed that if I held back on emotions, got more rational, I wouldn't be the person I am and that I would become cold, clinical, non-creative. What a load of balderdash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because when, once I had practiced putting these emotions through this pause, why? Why this then, Tricia? Well, if that, then why? That doesn't make any sense, does it? Because you did that before and that was great. Da, 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 da. Out through the filter, just a visualization, come these much more useful thoughts. They're not devoid of feeling and creativity or anything else, but they're manageable. And now I can do something really useful with them. Whereas before they were just a bunch of spaghetti exhausting me and with no focus. So mm. yay for the rationality filter. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah I, that idea of, yeah. And, and for us to, to be thinking in a in a different way to not deny who we are or anything like that but 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 changing that 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 mindset um now um i must ask about the cat because the, puffy puffy the cat the chaotic cat i love the way this cat's described um is this that and we always ask is this is this character based on 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 a cat that you know in real life um so that's my first part of the question and the second part is um you chose a cat and not a dog um that that bring in an, an animal personality in you know again was that there from the beginning or or did or did this cat slink along at some point and say <laughs> i need to be in your story it almost felt like that. You know, when writers talk about how they don't necessarily know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. and yeah, it did mm -hmm. feel like that with the cat. It really did. There was nowhere on earth that I had planned this cat. 
um, my daughter had a cat. She was at one point a utterly crazy cat woman. Um, and she had this cat called Puffy who she adored. And then she moved abroad and it uh, had to be adopted. But it, the, the name came from there, mm -hmm. a very fluffy cat. I'm actually allergic to cats and dogs, um, so I don't have any. Um, <laughs> but I recognise the, uh, you know, when I, I recognise the cheekiness of them, the slightly slyness of them sometimes, and the, just I want. I, I it did it did exactly what you say. It did slink in. I mm -hmm. felt that this investigator is in a rather messy sort of ala 1950s private eye type office, <laughs> dust and bookshelves overflowing and files on the floor. Um, and, and so it provided a playground <laughs> for Puffy, who just um, does some rather crazy things. But it provided also this, I thought at first, this is crazy, Trish, you're writing a business, but what are you doing? But it, it did take over and almost write itself. It felt so natural for the investigator to have this blinking cat. And it gave something for the clients to um, relate to as well mm. at times. And it gave a necessary little pause between mood swings. And so without realizing it consciously, I then began to use it more consciously. But yes, in, in the first place, it slinked in. Mm. Visual. It was visual, I think. The visual, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. yeah. um, now. I, I, I'm going to ask a difficult question, um, and and it's not meant to be difficult. Um, but you know, we've talked we've talked about gen, you know, a gendered issue, mm -hmm. and and to my mind, it does seem to lend itself more. This, I mean, this it seems really bad to say this to 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 a. A, a typical mm -hmm. oh I, I don't know how to frame this it seems to appear you know to, to be aimed more at women in a way and and I wonder is it that because on the whole it, it is more typical for women to have that squashed self mm. than it is for men I, traditionally I'm not sure mm. and, and I could be making a terrible terrible comment here and it's not meant to and maybe in my own sphere, it's that I know so many women. I mean, yeah. I could hear so many voices as I read. Yeah, um, I, oh, that that's good. And it, it, I do exactly what you're doing right now when I go into this subject area. I, and, and it doesn't, and, and, and I don't want to, and that's exactly what I do because that's how I feel. I, mm -hmm. I, when I was doing talks on this sort of related issue, you know, there were a couple of men who came up to me and said, oh my gosh, I had no idea that was what was going on with me, and which was so lovely to to have them. Mm -hmm. And I know, and I've got male friends who have read this book and are really enjoying it. So there is a commonality between a lot of them, which is that they are the kind of people who appear to be quite open to discussing their feelings. Um, and I, again, like you, I tread so carefully here mm -hmm. because I hate making oh, yeah. gendered stereotypes. But yes. But on the other hand, you know, I was born in the 50s, you know, when you couldn't have got more flipping gender stereotyped. You know, I was literally living in a ladybird book, you know, with mom, dad, you know, and my brother and me. And he did male jobs. I did female jobs. Um, and I was meant to go. It was that was my experience, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And so, and I worked in advertising in the eighties, like something out of Mad Men, you know, so we just were doled up looking pretty. And huh. so I don't think we can, it would be really stupid to deny that history and societal yeah. pressure, it wouldn't it, it would be dull. But that doesn't deny that we're all individuals and maybe if there's any guys that have, you know, even if they secretly and put brown paper over it or something, which, you know, would read this and just, I say at the beginning, you know, if you're not Samantha, you might be Sam. And, yeah. you know, and, and that's my way of saying, please feel free to read this. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's really important. And and just uh, Doug, hi Doug Sinclair, he's, he's with us this evening. Um, he, he's bought the book. Um, uh, yeah. So that that is brilliant. That's and, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. And and Kelly's put up, up put up the links as well in the chat for anybody else who who hasn't yet got their copy. Um yeah, Tracy says 
yeah, this book is needed and applied to both genders, definitely. Because I, I wonder as well, you know, is it often um, that, again, I don't like to work along binaries, um, but I, I totally agree with you, Tricia, that, you know, we have a long history of being divided along those those binary lines and, and the baggage, you know, not just the individual baggage, but the societal baggage. Mm -hmm that that we that we bring with and yeah it's i think it's i, you know, I it's, talk i talk about something called calling out the fibs um that hold us back and, and it's fe fears illusions and baggage and the illusions is also part of it so it's for men as well and women and everybody it's mm -hmm. it's the labels and the definitions and the all of that malarkey that that we have been bombarded with and frankly i'd love it if i didn't even have to think about what blinking gender is involved here. that would be my ideal world absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. And, and on that note you know i investigator <laughs> lewis is definitely you know um i'm a big fan of virginia wolf i'm you know I, i've done parts in the past in one woman shows where i've been partly a man partly a woman this this is this is the world i'd like to live in yeah 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 very much so ella's just commented that there are many men who feel squashed especially with societal expectations yeah yeah and so you know again a book that is a book that is there for all without a doubt Tricia, I'm afraid that we're coming to that moment i i hate i hate to to bring this to a close um it just remains for me to thank you so much uh, you know, for, for, for being with us uh, in this session, uh, Inspector. Uh, I, I, and, you know, we wish you, Honey and Stag, wish you all the very best uh, with this book. And, and, you know, without too much pressure, I do hope there will be a second, um, you know, yeah. because I think we really do need uh, texts like this that, that free us uh, and, and take us along um so trisha lewis well, it, it's been an absolute pleasure jackie i've enjoyed every minute of it um and um thank you whoever's there and yeah and i look forward to staying in touch with all you lovely people we celebrate you trisha thank you everybody for being with us for this session uh an excellent an excellent discussion there uh, and please do as you said um I think this is a book that you should get your hands on uh, and and drink it in and enjoy it. So uh, from Kelly Lacey and myself, uh, Honey and Stag, thank you for being with us. And we look forward to seeing you again soon uh, here for another one of our literary explorations. Good night.